Okay, let's uh, continue our demonstrations of the use of axiomatic semantics. And now we can move on to a much more interesting example, our GCD1 program. Right, so let's pop back the beginning of these slides and we can see that program. So, we're going to have to write a HOR triple that contains the entire program in the, in the middle part for the code. And we need to figure out what our pre and post conditions are going to be and what all the intermediate parts are going to be so we can generate this proof. All right, so to think about this, uh, make our precondition, if you recall, was that M0 is greater than 1 and N0 is greater than or equal to 1. And so these variables that are subscripted with 0 are meant to be uh, stand-ins for constants, things that don't change during the course of the program, and thus we can say something about, uh, we have a way then to relate our inputs to our outputs. All right, so GCD1 is the code, and our post condition is that i is equal to the greatest common divisor of m0 and n0. Alright, so how are we going to go about proving this? So the first thing we should think about is, or recognize, is that we could split the program up into pieces using our rule of sequential composition to perhaps first say something about this initialization step, we can then say something about the if then else, and say something about the while loop. So to get started, let's uh, realize something about these rules and that the axiom of assignment was used to generate a precondition from a postcondition. And so a good strategy to, to follow here is to use that and sort of work from the back, right? Work from the post condition. And our goal then is to essentially push this post condition and transform it, pushing it backwards through the program until we can get all the way to the beginning and generate the weakest precondition that would satisfy that post condition. So that's what we're, we're going to do. All right. So we have sort of our, our first step here is to consider the while loop. And we need to say something about what our loop invariant is going to be. Right, so we're going to grab this code here. I'm going to paste it over to the side. So, oops. So we have it there. This comes out a little funny, I guess. Lose some, some spacing. All right. So what do we think is happening as a, a, a loop invariant here? Right. So we hinted that at this in, in lecture that somehow we need to initialize things so that i is bigger, greater than any common divisor. And we keep decrementing i in the loop until i becomes an advisor, a, a divisor. Right, so this expression here, the condition of the while loop, right, we're going to abbreviate that this way. So we write cond in a few places, we'll know that it's an abbreviation for this expression, right? But this is really just saying that i is not a divisor of n nor m, right? So it may devise 1 but it doesn't div divide both of them. All right, and so we're counting down until we get to uh, the point where i is a common divisor, and then we know that it's the largest one. All right, so if we want to think about what a loop invariant might be, right, our first informal uh, approach to this is to say, well, the loop invariant is that i going to be greater than all common divisors. So when we finish this process, then we know that i is the greatest common divisor. 
So we're going to tweak this a little bit and really say that for all j, where j is greater than i, j is not a common divisor of n and m. That's what we want to be able to describe here. And from this, we want to put together the, uh, the rest of the, the piece of the proof. All right, so let's think about some other uh, abbreviations we could make here, right? So when we think about a greatest common divisor, what does that mean, right? This post condition here that I is the greatest common divisor. Let's flesh that out a little bit. So post is equal to I is, is an abbreviation for I is the GCD of M0 and N0. So what is the definition of GCD? Let's write post prime. Well, let's call this post, post 1 so we don't get confused with our double quotes and primes here. Right, so if I is the greatest common divisor, then we think, oh, what that means is that we need to say something about for all j that are greater than I. So let me get the for all down here again. So for all j where j is greater than I, right, we know that j is not a common divisor of n and m. And we know that i is a common divisor of n and m. So that's what it means for i to be the GCD, right? So if we expand this out, this gives us some clue as to what we might think our loop invariant is going to be, right? That the invariant here is for all the values bigger in i, those values are not a common divisor. And when we finish, then the negation of the condition has to hold. And the negation of that condition is exactly this second bit here. All right. And so let's make one correction here that these are the n0 and m0, right? So we're just expanding post into post 1. All right, so that's all fine and good, and so that's what we want to get to. But of course, the condition that we have up here says something about m and n. It doesn't say anything about m0 and n0. And so we need to make a bit of adjustment. So we would like a, a post condition, or another condition to consider, post 2, right, that is about n and m, not about n0 and m0. All right. And so, we, we need to start thinking about how we can put some of these pieces together. So we can make another abbreviation here. I guess before we put the pieces together, we'll consider another expression, right? The negation of our condition, which would be that i, I is a common divisor right? And in this case, we need to negate this. Right, so the neg we're going to do the negation of the condition in the while loop. And so this is a thing that's going to have to be true uh, after the while loop. And so what does this look like if we negate this? Right, well, this just says that it is a common divisor. Oops. So uh -huh. here we go. So this is just a nice application of De Morgan's rules. All right, my cursor is acting a little funny here. Mod i equals 
equals zero. All right, so let's go back and look at the rule of iteration. All right, so that's this one here. And so we have a lot of pieces we can work with now. Oh, sorry, so we have our condition, we have the negation of the condition, and we need some loop invariant that we can work on. All right, so what we want to do is consider this as a possible a loop invariant, right? That every value bigger than i is not a common divisor of m and n. All right, so we'll pause here. You want to take a minute and consider these uh, abbreviations, and when we come back, we'll see how to start putting all these pieces together.